You know, after three millenniums, I've been trying to record this draft analysis for a very long time. But anyways, hello randomies and welcome to another draft analysis on the channel. And today we're going to be covering the little cup that is actually hosted by the RBA. Now, first thing first, I do want to say is, man, do I feel like, I don't know how to say it. I guess the word is honor to be part of IBA's ever first, you know, like RCF. Then we have the IBA VGC that we just finished. Now, I don't know who won because the time of the, the time that I'm recording this is the day before the final, or I guess when the video of the finals is being uploaded. So I don't know who won and it's between Rebel Trainer and Foxy Tour. Now, funny enough, funny enough, in my previous recording, I said between Wes and uh, Foxy Tour, which was wrong information and kind of pushed me into doing this whole entire video again. But anyways, uh, that's all I really wanted to say. And let's get on with the video itself. So well, one thing I do want to point out in this draft analysis is I'm not going to be covering the rules because honestly, I'm going to be honest. I think it's kind of boring, <laughs> but here I'll, I'll post them. I'll post them for those who actually want to know what rules that I have to buy with. So they're on the screen as you can see. So I guess the three or I guess four rules that we have to follow is the first one. Uh, the first one, which means we can G max or just Dynamax in general, because there's no G max mod in little cup. So we can't, we can't just Dynamax. And another rule that I feel like it's important is that all battles are going to be set to level five because they're baby Pokemon. I I don't know why it's always been like this. I, I guess that's how it was set. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest with y'all. Uh, another one is uh, no duplicate Pokemon. I don't know. I, I don't get this one. If someone understands this rule, why it exists, feel free to explain this to me in the comments because I have no clue what that what that means and how does that involve in anything in this cup. But all right. Uh, another one is, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, uh, another good shout for the rules is the very last one. And that is can bring more than two of any item per week. So essentially we can have two EVL light users. And I feel like that's a very power move right there. So if you can have two EVL, EVL light users or not just that, if you go beyond that, you can have like two life orbs, two choice guard, two choice specs. You can't exceed more than that on only one item. I mean, I mean, it would be kind of broken if we could use like two of each each other item. So basically, we could have like it would be broken if we could have like two choice carb, two choice specs, and two EVO lights or something like that. That would have been kind of crazy. Uh, so I think that's why that rule existed. So yeah, dang. All right, pretty dope. So those are all the rules I really just wanted to cover before I go on to the actual Pokemon's or Pokemans or pokes that I decided to draft. So those are the rules. And I guess I'll briefly go through the tiers. Uh, in terms of this draft league, we have four different tiers. Well, five, uh, one through four and the free tier, I guess you would call it free, right? Or free agency or whatever you want to call it. And the way that we occupy the free, the free tiers is that the previous one through four tiers are given or assigned points. So tier one would give would be given a hundred, tier two would be given seventy-five, tier three would be given fifty, and tier four and twenty is twenty-five. So the points that every coach was given was two hundred and twenty-five. So I hopefully uh, it's it's easy to understand a little. And if you don't, it's all good. Just know that I use this system to basically choose the remaining four mods for those free tiers that you see on the screen. So essentially we would have to pick and choose any of those tiers as long as we don't exceed 225 points, which your boy messed up because he's not good at math. Good thing I'm not a math major because someone would have um, not given me my degree. But anyways, uh, so that's it. I really wanted to cover. I felt like that was kind of a little bit important since this is something rather new. I never went through a point system, which I kind of effed up, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So with that being said, we can now go to the, t I guess the draft itself. So anyways, uh, the way that we're going to be going through this is not in the order that I chose them, which I should have, 
Uh, at least the first two Pokemons that I chose them were not in order. They're actually in reverse <laughs> in the way that I chose them. And after that, I was just like, you know what? Just to keep my life simple, I'm just going to go in order after... <laughs> I'm going to go in order and I just jump around because I feel like that analysis is going to be kind of tricky. So, anyways. Uh, starting off with our first choice. And our first choice that I decided to draft was because I love dragon types. I, I love dragon types. Oh, actually, I spoiled the first. Uh, I, I spoiled my second mod. All right. My second mod is a dragon type. Uh, <laughs> all right. So the first one I... Or not the first one that I chose, but the first mod on the list right here is Ponyta. Now, now that I look at it, I just finished prepping right now for going up against my week one opponent for the Little Cup. And I hopefully have an idea of why I chose these mods from this whole entire list. Uh, starting with uh, starting with Ponyta. Uh, Ponyta is like a huge throwback to the PLCL. If you're not aware of what that is, no worries. Uh, essentially, it was my first ever Little Cup that I was ever a, power, a part of. And if you want to check it out, definitely go ahead and check it out. Here's like a title card right here to the top right of this video. And it'll direct you to all the matches I had in the PLCL. And let me just tell you, man. Or let me tell y'all. Uh, Ponyta has come in clutch more times than, than I can ever count. So I'm surprised not a lot of people chose Ponyta. And I feel like Ponyta is like one of the best fire type Pokemon out there that you could have drafted. So I said, why the heck not? Let me choose Ponyta out of the big, I guess, range of lists of Pokemon that are very popular in this tier. And I scooped up Ponyta because of the, even though it is limited in some movement, uh, in some move sets. But if you use them wisely and with the correct items, which I hopefully I could demonstrate in week one, but if not, then in the future week, uh, Ponyta is a really huge solid pick that I personally feel that I feel like it could add some fire to my team. All right. So that was my tier one mon. Uh, moving on to my tier two, which I kind of mentioned was my, it was a dragon type, right? So what I decided to choose was Bagon. Now I really wish Dorolodon was in Little Co, because, you know, well, I actually wouldn't qualify because they, they don't have a previous tier. But if it did, it should have. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I would have scooped it up. I mean, have you seen the stats of Duraldon? I mean, it's not the best dragon type, but still. I love my boy. I'm a big Durilla boy fan. So, so I decided to choose um, uh, Bagon because I honestly felt like... I don't know how to explain it. Because I know there was Gibble and there was all these other mons that... I saw his potential along with Axew, and I was just like, how about nah? Let me, let me try something new. Let me try something new. And I thought of Bagon, and I guess one of the key points about Bagon that I chose it for was the fact that it has the ability Sheer Force and Rock Hit, I believe. Actually, you know what? I'm actually going to double check on that because I believe Rock Hit is the one that... Wait, actually, no. Isn't Rocket that prevents you from getting recoil damage from some certain moves like Head Smash or something like that? But anyways, I think it was because of Sheer Force. Yeah, because Sheer Force, I can Life Orb that bitch and I'll probably have to censor that. But I can Life Orb this Bagon and just do huge damage if I can set up a potential, like, have another Mon to go ahead and s in increase my speed in some shape or form. I feel like with Life Orb Bagon on the screen, if I could set up even a Dragon Nest on top of that, I think that's just going to be unstoppable. So that's why I kind of decided to go ahead and draft Bagon as my main Dragon type. And also, in terms of the order that the draft process was happening, I was actually the first in the list. So I have first dibs, and my first dibs was Bagon followed by Ponyta. So those are my reasons for the first two picks, and let's go on to the second tier 2 mon. So after... Uh, after seeing my options between the fire and dragon type typings, I was like, you know, everyone in the chat was talking about like some water types. They were talking about Mantike, whether it should be allowed or not. And I said, why the heck not? I'm going to go ahead and scoop up Mantike because I see potential, my boy. I really see the huge potential be behind Mantike and in the defense and the offensive, well, the support, I mean, not the offensive, because it does have some offensive with the base 60 special attack, but uh, with its support that it can allow, as long as it doesn't get hit by an electric type move, this this thing is going to take a hit. Now, I don't know about physically, but special defensively, yes, it's going to take a hit. 
So hopefully in week one, I get to learn more about Mantyke and what it can and cannot handle. So uh, it's going to be very interesting. So I brought Mantyke as my number one or one of, of the many tanks on the squad. So moving on to our tier three picks. Uh, going on at the, at this point, I was just like, I got fire, I got water, and then I got dragon. But I was kind of thinking, uh, I gotta get a grass type at the same time. But then I wasn't, but then I was thinking, it's like, I kind of need a neutral typing. And the only typing that came to mind in tier three, in terms of the options that I had available at the time was Esper. Uh, Esper actually wasn't my main choice. But it was my secondary choice, not because I got sniped, but because I felt like, uh, how would you say, Esper really has that all-around stats, and compared to LGM, who was initially going to be my ch pick for this, but the reason I didn't decide to go with that, since I already have a very fast team, but I was also taking into consideration, uh, Trick Room being an, uh, being a thing in Little Cup. Because believe it or not, I think it, it, it's not popular, I believe, but I have seen it and I, with my team being as fast as it is, uh, slow type Pokemons can't really do me in. But at the end, I was just like, you know what, let me just try to keep a balance in speed and hopefully I could counteract Trick Room when the time comes. So I just went with Esper with the ideal with a good balance, a Psychic type of Pokemon for a tier 3 Mon, and that's what I went with. So that was one of my tier 3 mods and the reason why I chose him. Now going on to the second to last tier 3 mod, watching my last one actually as a matter of fact. So that was Shinx. Uh, Pancake Wizard, if you're actually watching this video, I am so sorry my boy, I sniped you for this. And even though I think self -conscious, or subconsciously I knew you were going to pick this. Uh, Cause you were talking a, a bit about it on the chat, but I needed an electric type. and the. I mean, Illocate would have been a good option for this, but I saw Shinx and I was like, hmm, I can dodge for that. I can dodge. Shinx has a good amount of potential with abilities like Rivalry, with giving it kind of like that plus Life Orb. It could, it, you know, it, it is some, it's not something to play around with. So, Rivalry is a really good ability. And I feel like it would be powered. It's kind of like a free Life Orb in, uh, well, actually, now that I think about it, why did I not bring that? Wait, did I? Eh, who knows. Uh, but anyways, Rivalry is a kind of like a free life orb. Correct me if I'm wrong. With, I guess it's a .25 on on male to male or on the same gender. And if it's... Well, actually, I think it says male. It's a 1.25 increase on all attacks that it delivers. And then .75 on females. So, yeah. Rivalry is a strong ability. But on top of his other two abilities being Guts and Intimidate, it's a really good combo. And that's why I scooped up Shinx, even though its moveset is kind of, well, all the Little Cup mons have an eh, an eh moveset, but Shinx has a good all around, uh, having a couple of fighting types, electro types, well, obviously, uh, ground types, and etc, 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 which I hope to show in the coming weeks, because I, I feel like Shinx is a very solid pick in terms of the electro type Pokemon, and one of my best options for tier 3, and yeah. Those are my tier 3 mods, let's go to the next one. So here's our final pick. I needed a mon that was for the memes and this is where Tokopi came in clutch. Um, I wanted to pick Tokopi for the fact that I can hopefully meme with it, hopefully I could go ahead and set up like some metronome shenanigans or I don't know, I mean it doesn't have like offensive capabilities but it would be cool to have an explosion on the screen you know. Metronome like toke 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 explode explosion you know you know I, I really hope I can pull this off in the little cup league um I'm not gonna drop it because hopefully I can pull it off one week where you know my fate is sealed because they check me now I'm just kidding but hopefully I could do pull it off at some point maybe against Goki or something <clears throat> Goki if you're seeing that uh, if, you're, if you're watching this video don't 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 assume that I'll bring Tokopi. Um, <clears throat> I'm not trying to reverse reverse psychology you, but hopefully I I, I am. <laughs> and if, if I am reverse reversing the psychology on your brain, then I feel like my point is done or my point is made. But anyways, uh, so that's all I have to say for uh, uh, the regular tiers. Let's move on to the free tiers. 
uh, or the free agency or however you want to call it. So now going into this mode for the last four Pokemon, it had taken a lot out of your boy because I had to do math and your boy is like can do 2 plus 2 which I honestly don't know what 2 plus 2 is anymore. I think it's 22, right? Yeah, yeah, it's 22. So yeah, so uh, going on to my first pick for the free agencies, I was just like, hmm, I want a tier 1 mon because it has a good grass type that I need. So I look at my team, I was actually trying to vision out, like have a all around typing, like have one of each typing so that I don't have a lot of weaknesses, which I think I do have a lot of weaknesses. Uh, at least at the moment, I don't see any. My brain not working today, but yeah. So the grass type that I decided, so I drafted a grass type for my first mon and it's an added bonus with his additional typing being steel type and that is Pharaoh seed. And the reason why I dr drafted this was because it's big brother or it's evolution is Ferrothorn and Ferrothorn is just phenomenal. Uh, good defense, good offense, has access to spikes, has access to stealth rock that I could potentially use in a future match. And yeah, that, that's enough said. That's why I chose it. And this was worth 100 points. And now that cuts my, my, my points a lot. So I'm left with very few options and moving on to that I honestly going on to the next uh, free agency mon I was like I need a fighting type or more like I want a fighting type I want uh you know I want a Jackie Chun on the on the on the squad and the one that came into mind which I hope it is my second choice please be it please be it yes all right <laughs> it was Ryolu and I chose Ryolu because uh because I felt like well, actually, I got pranked. You know, it's kind of it's kind of funny because uh, it, it has the prankster ability, but it doesn't have really good prank. Uh, well, not prank, but like status effects that I can abuse of it, uh, like Thunder Wave or Confuse Rate, which I think it does. But in this match, I've known a really cool thing about Ryolu that I hopefully I can troll my boy with. Uh, I've not understood a secret way of using prankster on Ryalu, but it's a good way to play mind tricks. Hopefully, anyways, um, maybe maybe it's just a, a small idea of your boy, but hopefully I can pull it off. And one of the main reasons I did choose Ryalu was because of prankster, and which is funny enough because I, even though I looked at the moose and I say, oh yeah, this is kind of solid. But either than either uh, other than that reason, Ryalu is a really good fighting type Pokemon with its moves. Uh, such as Force Bomb, Brick Break, Breaking Screens, uh, Bullet has a lot of priorities such as Vacuum Wave, Bullet Punch, Fake Out, I think it does. Uh, you know what? I'm not, you know what? I think it does. Let me, let me look up on Showdown real quick. I believe it does have access to, I don't want to play. Uh, let's go here. New, no, no, at Pokemon, Ryolu. Bam! We're gonna go ahead and check if it has fake out. No, never mind. It doesn't have fake out. But you get my gist. It has a good amount of move sets, so that's why I went with Ryolu, and I feel like it was one of my best options in terms of fighting type moves. And yeah, and I believe this sucker cost me 75 points. I believe, and it's a tier two mon. No regrets. No regrets. But here's the biggest mistake that I did. So, knowing that, if we were to do the math with my first two agencies, that gave me I don't know I don't I can't do math what, what's 100 plus 75 175 and you do the subtraction from 225 that leaves me with 50 points right and at this point I thought I can get away with not using all my free slots which I did not read the rules and I went ahead and chose Sinistia as my last mon but that was a tier 3 mon that was worth 50 points which is equivalent to the remainder of my points so I kind of effed up and I made an illegal move in the draft and that really kind of not really affected me but it was a mistake that did cost me a choice a pick and that was very terrifying because I was like god dang it <laughs> now now I went from like having the first choice and having all my choices done to like having to be the last one to choose and having basically the remainder of these mons that are garbage which now that I look at them they're not as garbage as you would think uh, 
I just got lucky, just to say the least, because uh, all I had access to me now with 50 points is just tier 4 mods. So the first tier 4 mod that I decided to go ahead and grab was Temple. Now, the reason why I got Temple was because Temple, if I could make good use with the combo with Mantike, I can activate the Swiss Swim ability and just do damage. Uh, it, it may not be the best in the offensive with a base 50. I'm going to actually double check with a Tempo on that. Uh, yeah, with the base 50 special attack and attack, it could be both. And I feel like if I could uh, make sure I could use make use or uh, put to use its with some ability, I can really do a good amount of work. So that was my second to last choice. Now, in terms of my last one, I was thinking of grabbing or snagging another water and grass type. And you know, I think this is where Pancake got me. Or actually, it was either Pancake or it was Curse Shaka. And this is, I think, one of the many... Well, the one that I remember at the moment that I got sniped. And that was Lotad. And it was one of the Tier 4 mods. And believe me, Lotad is a good mod. At least when it comes to if someone were to, if someone were to bring Trick Room against me. With a base 30 speed, I believe it has. Lotad is no joke. I mean, I thought it was garbage, but base 30... 40 special attack even though it doesn't have the best a special attack in the game but its ability does help along with its moveset but unfortunately your boy got sniped and could not get it so instead we decided to draft Rolts. uh Rolts, although it's not as good as the old ted in terms of typings it does pretty much offer a lot on the table with its second fairy type ability but it does make add more weaknesses to fairy Wait, Ghost and Fairy, if I'm correct. Or Steel. Actually, I don't know. Well, I have a huge Electric Weakness and Ghost Weakness by the looks of it. But yeah, uh, I chose Rose because I think it was one of the, literally, the last options, I mean, to choose from. All the other mods just were meh. Or meh. I, they, were below, they were below mediocre tier. They were just meh. So I got the lefties. At least I didn't have to choose a... Magikarp or Force too, so it's better than nothing. Relt has a good amount of move sets too, and if I could, if I use it wisely, it could be an MVP in when I when I go up against um, a Trick Room, if that's even a thing. So, anyways, uh, th that was my team, and looking on my team, I feel like my biggest weakness is uh, the fact that I do not have any hazard removals, and I might have to go ahead and just drop someone for that because I feel like I'm going into week one right now that I'm about to battle Monk on he has uh, a lot of hazards uh, Pokemon that have access to hazards and I don't have anything to do about it and that kind of pushed me into going in an offensive way so yeah that's a little sneak uh, I guess a little spoiler I guess uh, a little sneak peek behind my, uh, behind my team building against Monk I was going uh, towards offensive so I literally had to go full offense against Monk week one, and hopefully I can make some exchanges going into week two. Uh, if I had to make an exchange, I don't know at the moment. We'll see. I'll probably won't make any exchanges until like week three because I want to get the hang of this team and see what doesn't work and whatever doesn't work, just have that drop and then exchange later on. So anyways, that's been your, my draft analysis. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what you think about this squad. I, I see it's huge weaknesses to uh, hazards. In terms of typings, I see a little bit of ghosts. I see a little bit of electric. And I don't know what else. Maybe ground. Uh, yeah, I, I guess you can make the case ground. And anyways, uh, those are the weaknesses. Again, let me know in the comments what y'all think about that. Anyways, this has been Gizmo GX. Also, uh, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Click the notifications uh, bell icon to be updated with the first week of the IBA little cup league when it comes out on the channel. So this has your, been your boy Gizmo, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.